So we should probably introduce and say that we're going to be complaining about Vosh today. Or Vosh, if you're not happy with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got Catherine Klein here with me. Or I'm with Catherine Klein. It depends how this is going to go. We're together. <laughs> and we're going to um, talk about Vosh, which is, you know, my, he's, he's just so great, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. He's a real, a real one. <laughs> so um, not too long ago, he did a debate with um, another content creator called Arel relevant um talking about hasana b who bought like a what is it like a three million dollar mansion yep <sighs> and yeah well basically i don't i don't think this is a straw band to say that vosh doesn't care if someone's hypocritical i don't know what he cares about <laughs> to be honest with you like for me like uh of course you care about someone being hypocritical because that means that they aren't engaging in behavior that you want them to engage in. So there is a problem if they are acting hypocritically. But anyway, let's go through it. I don't know what it means to live your principles. Do capitalists <laughs> not buy from subsidized industries? Do people who believe that animals have feelings not buy meat? This is the same argument that I had with the vegans. And like with the vegans, it feels like they're more motivated by feeling better than the people they dislike than they are by making an affirmative change. Which is why like? I'm okay with the good vegans. The ones who say, hey, maybe maybe try not eating meat on Tuesday. So he essentially says he, he doesn't understand what it means to live your principles. I don't get it. <laughs> like, and he has such a visceral reaction to like hypocrisy, the word hypocrisy being called a hypocrite. He like, he's okay with being a hypocrite almost. Like he thinks that's fine. Um, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't really understand either. Do people who believe that animals have feelings not buy meat? This is the same argument that I had with the vegans and like- Yeah, they do realize that animals have feelings <laughs> and that's like a problem. It's like, if you realize these individuals have feelings and you're literally buying into an industry that profits solely off their feelings, not being acknowledged and respected and them literally having their autonomy violated and then having them like murdered in the masses, that is a hypocrisy and that's a bad thing. And do you know why it's a bad thing? Because it leads to animals, for example, being murdered. If people <laughs> weren't being hypocrites, then maybe we'd see a world where animals weren't getting murdered, ding dong. This would be a good time to show that that vegan sidekick comic. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh <laughs> this is literally Vosh right now. Vegans <laughs> are so self-righteous. What does that mean? You think you're better than other people. No, I just don't want to harm animals. Yeah, well, you just do that because you think it makes you right and then you feel proud of yourself. Uh, yeah, that's called having a conscience. What's the alternative? Do what I know is harmful and then feel bad about it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's literally him. He's like, well, I feel bad about it. Like he, he thinks the industry is terrible and he wants, he literally said that he wants to ban meat. Mm -hmm. If he had the power to ban meat, he would. So he thinks that eating meat and feeling bad about it is the same as, or is actually better <laughs> than vegans, like recognizing that they're being a hypocrite and then changing their behavior. Oh God, it just, like, it just stands uh, to display why being concerned with hypocrisy is a good thing. With the vegans, it feels like they're more motivated by feeling better than the people they dislike than they are by making an affirmative change. More motivated by feeling better than the people we dislike. Yeah, how can he say that? Like, how can he claim to know the motivations of vegans? Not only claim to know the motivation of, of vegans, but to claim to know how we feel about every single person who eats animals. <laughs> That's amazing. It's not just the case that when someone eats animals, I suddenly dislike them. I dislike the action. This is so charged right. with nonsense. I can't believe he felt <laughs> confident to say this. It's like, yeah, we don't actually think that our behavior is making positive changes in the world. We're just doing it to feel better than other people. Like <laughs> Yeah, and like if I if I wanted to genuinely feel better than other people, not being funny, but I'd probably start up like a left wing channel because that's more popular than being a vegan. Because right. like you get so much more praise, you get so many more subscribers, so many more people agree with you. So you can feel superior because you've got so many more people validating that. Whereas when you're a vegan, yeah, you have some people validating you, like often, you know, vegans, but a lot of the time you have people who actively 
engage in behavior that would demonstrate they really dislike you and think you're disgusting they think you're horrible you have people accusing us of being like colonizers and everything like left right and center because we don't want to like eat animals don't you think that the up to 2.7 trillion animals being killed every single year, being exploited every single year. Don't you think that, oh, what a wild idea that some people like ourselves might think that takes precedence over how great we might feel? Like not everything, like is, is it the case that Vosh thinks everything is kind of like a power play? You know, to kind of like, um, he was having a debate with someone saying everything's kind of like a power play and you know you're serving your interests well not everyone thinks like that Vosh some people actually give a shit about others and want to act in their interests as well they might think oh yeah well it would be pleasurable to eat this burger that's just in this shop that's right next to me that would be really convenient to me but oh hang on that's the corpse of a once sentient being so they had to have their entire existence taken away from them so maybe we should consider not enabling those systems to take place like yes it does exist that some of us do give a shit about others Vosh I know weird <laughs> but bear with us also okay but apply this to all the other social justice movements he advocates for I know like <laughs> is he just advocating for trans rights to make himself feel better than other people like I think oh you're only criticizing what's his face I don't know. Ben Shapiro. Transphobic. Ben Shapiro or um, Steven Crowder. Yeah, you're only mm. criticizing them because, or you're only speaking up for trans people because you want to feel better than Steven Crowder. Like, maybe that is just projection. Like, maybe that, maybe he is projecting what he does onto us. Maybe he thinks, well, I couldn't think of a reason why you wouldn't do something for a self serving interest solely. So obviously, they're just trying to do it. They dislike the, the non vegans and, and they're obviously just trying to feel better than us. They are by making an affirmative change which is why like. I'm okay with the good vegans, the ones who say, hey, maybe maybe try not eating meat on Tuesdays. <laughs> so, so, but, so to be a good vegan, you have to advocate for not veganism. I'm exactly. so sick of this. I'm so sick of, I just can't take any more Catherine. I'm like so done with people. Like they're just this absolute, <laughs> oh, I love the good vegans who don't advocate for their own movement, who don't advocate <laughs> for the animal rights to actually be upheld. You know, that entire thing that encompasses their movement me i can't Vosh is a socialist he advocates for socialism which clearly triggers a lot of people mm -hmm. right so should he abandon his advocacy for socialism in favor of social democracy to appease conservatives and this is like, what I, I don't get because he's so against like because if you look on the left you've got like tankies and all that and he actively hates the tankies he's he's like no <laughs> i need he's like no we need to um uh, gatekeep and really make sure that, that, that people have these specific values because otherwise you know they're left leaning and they end up being a tanky or something like that. He's actively against that. Yeah, if a vegan comes along and goes, no, we need people actually upholding animal rights. We don't need someone who on Tuesdays is plant-based because that's not enough for those animals. So it's like, what do you believe? <laughs> yeah, it's, I hate this idea and I think he talks about this later, mm -hmm. which We'll, we'll react to that as well but like i hate this idea that vegans are supposed to advocate for not veganism <laughs> like for reduced vegetarianism it's like okay reduced vegetarians will advocate for reduced vegetarianism <laughs> yes uh, why sh why do i a vegan have to advocate for reduced vegetarianism no i'm going to advocate for veganism because that's my position it's like like my socialist analogy, like should all socialists just abandon advocating for socialism? Or you know when Let, he's having okay. a he, when he's having a debate <laughs> with someone who's homophobic. Oh, you know what? I can't get you to stop hating the lesbos. But you know what? If you could just like Ellie, you know, for literally like one day of the week, if you could just like grant her the the basic, you know, like you know, um, right to marry um, in your mind, if you allow that that one day, would that be enough? Like off you would not allow it this would not fly it's just guilt leaking out of every pore of his body and he's projecting it onto us that's all i can yeah. think it is and it also that reminds me of in the states at least when marriage gay marriage was legalized like a decade ago or something mm -hmm. there was this whole argument about uh we have to protect the sanctity of marriage and oh let's and then there was like a half measure where let's let them get let's let them have a civil union yeah like they can still get the tax yeah. benefits <laughs> but let's call it a civil union we should we can't call it marriage and it's like 
<laughs> that's that, not advocating for equality. That, that's that, advocating no. for their, it perpetuates the idea that it's not a real marriage. Exactly. And, that, and it is it's rooted in homophobia because obviously atheists exactly. can get married as long as they're straight. So it's like, well, right. they're, they're, you know, that's not the sanctity of marriage if people who literally don't even believe in God are getting married under his name. Like, please. Right. So yeah. And yeah, <laughs> sure. A civil union is better than not letting them get a civil union. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't advocate for gay marriage. Like, well, according to Vosh, you should. That's enough. Like, that would be a good, like, you know, gay rights activist if I were to go out and just be like, look, can we just have, like, a, just a teeny little cheeky civil union? And we'll only do it on a Wednesday. Only on a Wednesday do you have to deal with the gays. Every other day, you know, you can pretend that we don't, you know, that's fine. Like, please. I'm just, I'm suffering an aneurysm already. Right, let's see if he says anything else. Maybe we could cook this meal together. <laughs> Maybe we could cook this meal together. This is, this is what's like terrifying to me, okay? Because he says, oh, maybe, you know, we could cook this meal together. Like, it is possible to be consistent in your values and to be against something and be like, look, can you not do that? That's wrong. Let's cook right. a meal together. Let's, let's um, you know, enjoy. You can see all these things th that you could have without exploiting these animals. Why are you a good vegan if you don't advocate for veganism? And why is it not possible for vegans to also do like some of these things you're talking about? And why are these things specifically good? Because it sounds like they're just things that don't challenge your worldview and make Make right. you feel bad. I would also add that when it comes to people like in real life, when it comes to people that I am, am not super close with, mm -hmm. but maybe they're an acquaintance or like an extended family member, I'm not going to be super straight up with them like I would be with someone I'm close to because mm -hmm. that wouldn't really work, mm -hmm. you know? I do those things that he's, he's <laughs> suggesting. I'll be like, hey, do you want to like go to this restaurant that happens to be vegan? Like I suggest vegan restaurants. I might if they really like nachos, I might suggest a super delicious nacho cheese recipe. Like mm -hmm. I'm not berating people, you know, but when it comes to my advocacy on my channel, I'm speaking to a general audience. Like there's no way I can perfectly tailor my message to everyone to like meet everyone where they're at because people are at different places. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm going to speak the truth knowing that it will resonate with some people and it won't resonate with others because like I said, they're at different levels. And Vosh does the exact same thing on his channel. Like some people who watch him are gonna think he's batshit and like way too far to the left, but his message is going to resonate with people who are ready to hear that message. Mm -hmm. Like Hunter Avalone, <laughs> perfect example. Like mm -hmm. if you believe in something, you should advocate for it honestly and it's going to resonate with the people who are ready to hear it. Like, I I just like, you can't apply certain contexts to like every context, if that makes sense. No, like, you yeah. Can't. He's, probably and, the, and, he's probably the same in real life, isn't he? Because like with my kind of style of doing it, I react on streams to things and I do it in a very similar way. And when someone comes to de debate me, when they come and th with the, the knowledge that they're about to debate this topic, it's like, okay, well, there's an expectation here that you better have good arguments. You better be ready to have this conversation. And I'm going to be harsher because this is the environment to hear it. And it, it, he probably does the exact same thing where in real life he wouldn't you know go you know through political theory and you know call people idiots like it's funny because he's harsher than i am but if he saw my stuff or even your stuff you're way nicer than i am but i get a bit sassy but he he will full-on just call people idiots he'll say they're insane psychotic and stuff like that so it's like well <laughs> it's like you're worse but a vegan comes along does the exact same thing you do then oh my god they are one of the bad vegans like define bad vegan i don't understand this there's so much wrong. Primitive ah. arguments that change people's minds, not just an excuse to feel better than the people who you think aren't living up to their principles. So, so this this doesn't even work. This, uh, that's claim, oh, do say things that are going to change people's minds. That wouldn't, like, that doesn't work because it is the it's case. It's not universal. Yeah. yeah. It like, is the case that it will change people's minds. If I go, listen here, you f***ing like just get your act together stop being a twat to the animals sort it out some people need to hear it like that like they do like there, there have been so many like vegans obviously this is anecdotal um but we can you know apply this to um basically like anything where someone's like shamed into 
you know um not buying from a certain company because they you know are like when you find out oh my god that company's homophobic you know that the you, you know the people do it all the time like you know that that cupcake shop that was like homophobic so people were like you can't be buying from there they're like these are evil people it's like when you're shamed because you've done something rather it could be really powerful on your psyche on whether or not you do that again like it can be something that's just really moves people so to say oh well you're not you're not effective if you do it this way i don't know why so many ding dongs say this like as if this is even true because if this were the case he would have to stop doing precisely what he does because he shames people and and, and like he literally like he went like softer on hunter avalon but he still shamed him like being like this is like like homophobic this is transphobic to have these views and and Mm. look it changed his mind and it's like well then sorry if if you think it doesn't work then why are you doing literally what you do all day, every day. My God. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, he he repeats a lot of the same talking points. Yeah, this entire there's... three hours, 50 minute debate was very circular. It was, you know, I, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. recommend watching this one because it was pretty painful. I, f- I feel like if anybody's attributing points here that don't belong to somebody, it's you to me. I, I haven't, you're like talking about vegans here and stuff like this. Listen, I'm, I, and you're trying to say that I really hate Hassan here. I mean, I, I've gotten into trouble get saying that. Disproportionate. I, yeah, that's the thing with Vosh. It's not just the vegans that he like rags on and assigns all these like motivations to. He does it literally a lot of the time with the people he's debating. Like he'll just uh, assert that they dislike or have hatred towards a person. I'm sorry if you have dislike and hatred towards everybody you call out, but that's kind of your problem. It's not the case. Like some of us can. It's quite difficult for me if I see someone just being so plainly and clearly like horrific to animals to like them. But there are non-vegans I like. It's not the case that the the attribute of being a non-vegan means I don't like someone. So (laughs) just to clarify that a lot of what he asserts is based in fucking fairyland. Like, I don't know what, like he shoves this, he pulls this out of his rectum and then tries to make a point out of it. It's, It's painful. He goes on and on about how like, it's not fair that socialists are held to higher standards. Mm -hmm. But I kind of wanted to make a point about that before we jump to the next timestamp. Like, I kind of get what he's saying. It is a little bit frustrating when, like, vegan activists, for example, are held to, like, ridiculously high Mm -hmm. standards compared to everyone else. I guess that would relate to, like, socialists as well, Mm -hmm. like, socialist influencers or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time... (laughs) Like, I think that it makes sense to hold them to higher standards because, yeah, it does. for example, like the reason we're not going after Ben Shapiro for his million dollar mansion is because he's kind of a lost cause. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, do you know about that million dollar vegan campaign by chance? Yeah, the one where they'll give a million dollars to a celebrity to try veganism for 30 days. Was yes, that, so yes, I like think that. it was I think it was like directed at Trump when yeah. he was president. And I just thought that was so stupid because like <laughs> you're not gonna convince someone like Donald Trump to empathize with animals. No, and he, and he said something it's like a wasted if I lose, effort. He like self-owned, <laughs> like because he was like, if I lose one more brain cell, that'll be horrific for America. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I didn't hear about that. That's yeah. hilarious. Oh god, bad. But no, like we the we we criticize the people within our communities. We criticize them, the people who profess these values that we're promoting. Mm -hmm. So like there's a difference between Ben Shapiro criticizing Hassan and leftists criticizing Hassan because Ben Shapiro doesn't live by those standards. He's just trying to make like a sick hypocrisy burn. Yeah. But for me, to, for me to criticize him, I feel like that's fair because I am only holding him to standards that I live up to. And, and it's the same thing with veganism. Like if a vegan is trying to hold me to a higher standard that they are living up to, like maybe I should listen to their arguments. But if a non-vegan is telling me that I'm a hypocrite because I don't live up to these the standard of perfection like i'm gonna ignore them yeah, so vosh is exactly vosh is like acting like conservatives who are bashing Hassan. It, he's equating that with leftists who are actually giving valid criticism yeah and, and i think those are two very different things absolutely and we could boil it down to like you know just like without any political alignment or any lifestyle say for example you have two people in a row so say you have me 
And then you have someone who's just known for being like a, a horrible person. He steals, he's hor horrific, he harasses people. And I would say like, <laughs> people might think I'm horrible, but like, I'm not, I don't steal from people or harass people, do you know what I mean? So there's this kind of understanding that there's a standard that I've put out to people of who I am or who I think I am and what they can expect from me. If we were to both do the same action, so we were to both go to our next door neighbor and steal from them, it would be a very different, uh, though the outcome is the same, someone's got stolen from, the, the criticism that I could expect to see would be so much more than the person who it was expected of. Because I've, I've shown these lived standards, I've said things about you know how we ought behave, so the hypocrisy is making it all the more worse. And when someone is right, willing right. to be hypocritical, they're less trustworthy. Everything they stood for becomes a lie. And that that does mean something. And the fact that Vosh is not mm -hmm. interested in it, I mean, good for you, but contextually speaking, social interaction does take into account hypocrisy a lot. <laughs> like, oh, I wouldn't expect yeah. that from them. That's so shocking. Like, oh, you've got to be yeah. careful of them. So yeah, I just, I don't know why he doesn't. He thinks that it's harmful to the movement to hold people to higher standards, which is so bizarre to me because I feel like I'm a better person today because I saw other people living a certain way who advocated that other people do the same thing. And that's why I went vegan. And mm -hmm. also that's why I quit buying stuff like fast fashion. Mm -hmm. So it was the it was the vegans and the vegans who advocated uh, against fast fashion who persuaded me to change my behavior. Yeah. Like it was the people who were holding people to higher standards who got me to hold myself to a higher standard. Yeah, exactly. Like I wouldn't have done that if no one was adv advocating for these things. If people were advocating for like meatless Mondays only or, uh, oh, we shouldn't, don't worry about like buying fast fashion. Like that doesn't make you a bad person. If that's what I was hearing from people, I would still probably be shopping at freaking H&M, you know? Like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I, yeah, that's anecdotal, but like I now live to higher standards because of people advocating. Mm -hmm. I find it funny those. as well. Like Humane Hancock was having this like weird interview with Melanie Joy. And um, he, oh he, he yeah. talked about how <laughs> this anecdote of how um, he was shamed out of like, um, because he wore a certain coat. And then Michelle Lowe was reviewing the video and she went, yeah, I bet you don't wear that brand anymore though, do you? Like, I, I bet you don't buy that anymore. I bet you don't take that to events. I bet you don't engage in that action any longer because because yeah. shame is powerful you're like oh yeah that wow. was so funny because he he like contradicted his point that he was trying to make because he admitted that like after the fact at first he was like oh like he, he felt attacked or whatever mm -hmm. but then after the fact he reflected on it and he was like you know <laughs> exactly because and, and it's like that's what people do <laughs> like <laughs> Like that that's the thing because a lot of the time we have so many conversations you don't remember what was said but you remember how you feel. So if you can if you can um instill a powerful um emotion in someone i.e. shame because you know if they're going to feel you know guilty you know about that thing they're engaging in that's going to be a really powerful emotion inside them and then that will make them think about it. So I just I don't get this whole not I really don't get it. I really don't. Like and this is the thing as well. This reminds me of a time where he said, um, should we make fun of like racists and Nazis? And he said, absolutely yes, because they need to be ashamed of what they do. They need to be made a mockery out of and feel bad about it. But, like, like, of course I, I make a mockery out of carnist nonsense. Like as does like the freaking um, vegan sidekick. We, we make a mockery out of it. Just demonstrate how ridiculous it is because you should feel embarrassed. You should feel guilty and ashamed that you're propping up an industry that literally exploits and kills like up to trillions of sentient beings every single year. You should feel kind of bad about that. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, oh yes, pat on the back, um, one time a week. Yeah, we're not gonna uphold the, the, the rights that we even believe in, like by getting someone to do it once a week. How does that uphold the rights of animals? I don't get it. Oh God, pain, right. Per se, it's like socialists should be held to a higher standard. Cause that, cause that, I, cause I don't, I, I just, I just don't well, think that. Cause that's the like belief we, system. Well, like, I don't. Think I mean, if we, if we want social, if we want socialists to win, why wouldn't we hold them to higher standards? We should, if we want them to win, we should do things that help the movement. Holding people to higher standards can hurt the movement, like well, how, how veganism are, how has been hurt we, by yeah, gatekeepers. How are, 
How are we- Where's the evidence that veganism has been hurt by gatekeepers, please? I'd love to see it. <laughs> if like anything, like, and I have no real evidence of this, right? I just have a feeling about it. If anything, veganism has been hurt by not enough gatekeeping, like with the conflation of plant-based and diets with veganism. Veganism is about like literally about animal rights, not exploiting and killing animals. That's all it's about. Yet people like think that certain things are vegan or they um, think that, oh, I, I went vegan, you know, for like, um, so that I could like feel really good. And I just didn't feel very good at the end of it. So like I went back, it's just like you didn't, I just want to know how veganism has been hurt by gatekeepers. I think that some vegans are a little too gatekeepy, but I mm-hmm. think those are in the minority and the majority of vegans are like the pick me vegans mm-hmm. who <laughs> I would say are hurting the movement yeah. by advocating for meatless Mondays and reduced vegetarianism. Yeah. And so far they're like confusing. They're like, muddying the waters and confusing the message exactly watering it down and to find the really like gatekeepy vegans you have to be within the movement and have found like their friend's friend friend who like like it's very like they're really annoying when you find them because they'll be like they'll be like i don't know drinking un filtered water isn't vegan or something ridiculous like that and you'll be like oh my god but yeah i don't know how they've hurt the movement because if anything you're showing why we need to gatekeep even more because you think that a good vegan advocate is someone who doesn't advocate for veganism which would demonstrate to a degree that you don't know what veganism is so we need to make it even clearer for people like yourself who have been spoken to about it multiple occasions, clearly not enough, clearly not enough gatekeeping has happened because you don't get it. How are we going to push that people, for instance, canvas without making arguments that people ought to Do you think veganism has been helped by the hyper-militant vegans who accuse everyone of being like super, like morally repugnant for participating in the meat eating industry? So this is what I was talking about earlier when I was saying, I think when you, you, what you hear when I say morally condemn is something that I'm not saying. I'm not saying that we have to call him a piece of garbage, a walking piece of shit, because he does what he does. I'm using moral condemnation as a vehicle to be able to establish a moral standard. That's what I'm doing. That guy made a great point. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is that condemnation is an inherent part of criticism. Mm -hmm. Like all criticism, there is some level of moral condemnation like baked into it, because that's what it is. But there's a difference between condemning someone's character and saying they're a horrible person, they're a piece of shit, and saying, hey, what you're doing is immoral for this reason. And Vosh is like, he like recognizes the difference, but then in when it comes to veganism, his brain just like completely, like he, <laughs> he doesn't realize that like that, he, what he's saying how do I say this? <laughs> <laughs> like he's conflating vegans advocating for veganism with condemning a person's character and like shitting all over them. Yeah, like I very much, it's it's very rare that I've gone to someone, you're a piece of shit. Like I, I don't think I've, I've, done, I've gone like, there's been a couple of people where they said things so abhorrent. I've just gone, sorry, like you're disgusting. Like, but it usually yeah. like, 97% of the time does not come down to that. It's like, this action is bad, right? This is disgusting. And I, I make a point in my like debates when people are like, you think I'm a bad person? I go, like, I don't know who you are. Like, I don't know what else you do. And it's hard for me to know when the line between bad person and good person is or neutral person. So I don't bother with that. Right. I just right. look at bad or good actions. And that action's bad. I can't tell you whether or not you're a good or bad person at this point. Um, but yeah, Vosh just, he's, it seems like he's so defensive. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And do you see what I mean? How like, so I agree that there are some people who are a bit too militant Mm -hmm. with their message. Like they could probably tone it down a little without sacrificing the integrity of the message. Mm -hmm. Um, But his definition of militant would include people like you and I and Earthling Ed who are simply advocating for animal rights. Like that's all, that's what we're doing is we're advocating for animal rights. Mm -hmm. And then 
in Vosh's eyes, like even if we're super careful not to be accusatory and we make sure to condemn their actions rather than their whole person, mm -hmm. like in Vosh, Vosh takes that as condemnation of his character rather mm -hmm. than valid cri criticism of his behavior. Which is, is just like, that's a, a character thing that he needs to work on if like it's more of a self-esteem sort of thing where he feels like he's being attacked and that's not anyone else's fault. And it's like, sorry that we're like literally advocating for the, the thing we believe in. It's like, it's like he's, it's like um, you're trying to paint your wall red. Then someone goes, oh, you know, let me, let me like add in like all these colors and stuff. And now you've got like a pink wall and you're like, no, sorry, I, I wanted a, a red wall like it had to be red how dare you like could we not just have it pink it's got a bit of red in it like it's just like yeah but it's not it's not red anymore and i specifically am going to have a red wall so it's like oh my god i can't but yeah carol the standard that you have set that you say would be bad if he went below that moral standard i'm just arguing for you to make it a little bit like uh have it go a little bit higher it's just i want not, people it's just to not have... about the st it's just about the behavior that ferments the best results if i thought that you could get really really good like advocacy for socialism by holding this gatekeeping standard to people then i would advocate for it i just i don't I get, because I'm, i think i'm that not it's trying to gatekeep him from being a socialist i'm not saying he no. isn't hassan's been set to a standard it might somehow push him away from being a socialist advocate therefore because he's like, um, you want him as a socialist advocate, apparently. He's a bit of a donut, but anyway. If you want him as one, therefore, setting him to the standards that he claims to have and that he, like, has a go at other people for doing, so hypocrisy, uh, would be a bad thing. But I don't, for me, right, I don't understand the point of advocating, because obviously people who are uh, socialists are advocating for how they wish the world to be. They want to see a world mm -hmm. that's fairer in their, that in their view that that's what that is because you're a socialist as well. You you want the world to see that. I lean towards that. Oh, politics makes me feel sick, so I can't. Do it. Um, but yeah, you're you're doing that with the Damn. premise. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it with the premise that you're going to make a fairer world. Then what's I don't understand why you wouldn't be interested in hypocrisy if you're looking for a fairer world, if the very people who apparently are supposed to be engaging in the, 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 the ideology that you're interested in aren't even doing it, because then surely the positive utility that should be being derived from that is not even happening or would have no intention of happening even if there were, were a socialist world. Because I, I do understand if the world was socialist, Hassan might not even technically have the option to do that or, or people would have more options to do that so it's fairer. But if someone's mm. willing to do something like that knowing you know what they advocate for and knowing like you know the situation everyone else is in does that not tell you that they'd be willing to like do something bad in a socialist world do something selfish in a socialist world do something hypocritical in a socialist world so of course we're going to want to manage that and make sure hey being hypocritical about this is not a good thing because the hypocrisy would just be present in a socialist world as well it'd just be a bit harder yeah but i also think that in a socialist world, we can't have that, or in an eco-socialist mm -hmm. world, like we can't have that level of consumption. No, I, I, I agree. Possible. Like, <laughs> as much as the mansions look nice, I could never have one myself. And I could like, I just don't understand how some one individual could have so much space. I know there's three of them, but even then three people in a mansion, like, <laughs> no, yeah. it just can't be done. Well, you're not so you gatekeeping do socialists, you're gatekeeping people from socialism by saying that they have a higher set of moral standards to adhere to. Do you agree that? If it, yeah, but I feel like this is getting pretty ridiculous. Do you agree that? The thing is, though, if someone's not willing to, like, so if you're, like, so with veganism, if they are gatekeeping veganism and going, okay, well, to do this, you don't, you know, involve yourself in the exploitation and killing of animals any day. You don't have these kind of days off, so, so you know, where you don't grant animals their rights. And that puts somebody off. I'm, why does that mean that the individual who has set those standards suddenly has to, like, slip just because some people are weak in their standards? I don't like I don't understand like why that is even a thing like if they're being pushed away from a message um that's consistent then like you can't just suddenly be like okay well I'll ditch the message then again Vosh would not do this if it came to like you know because he gets annoyed at destiny for being left leaning but like not socialist and being pro capitalism right, right. that I'm also gatekeeping people by saying that like we shouldn't say the n word what does that have to do with what we're talking about? By the way, I love it how he's just given an analogy. 
Vosh knows debate tactics and he's gone, what does that have to do with it? So you're being dishonest. Yeah. That is an analogy. Like you use them all the time. Hello, ding dong. Put your brain back on. Well, you just <laughs> said like, hey, if we uh, hold people to a higher moral standard, then we're going to have less people in the movement. And no, by me no, saying, wait, hey, no, no, guys. No, 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 no. Hold on. Yeah. That's, that has nothing to do with what I was saying. Not whether or not we hold people to a higher standard. It's whether or not you think that you're more willing to condemn a person if they join the movement that you want them to be a part of. Like, are you like, if, if, like for instance, veganism. And I think that, Did you follow that at all? <laughs> it sounded not, like he reworded, really. he reworded exactly what that is because if he had to actually entertain that analogy, it would have shown an inconsistency in his position because then he would have had to have bit yeah. the bullet and be like, no, we can't, we can't say that then. So I think I follow what the other guy is saying. Is like if <laughs> say it's is it gatekeeping to say that if you're a leftist you shouldn't go around saying the n word mm -hmm. and if you do go around saying racial slurs then you're not really a leftist. Yeah. Is that hurting the leftist movement? Yeah, apparently. No. Apparently. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's why. And I think it Rush is. knew exactly what he was saying, and that's why he had to reword it to a a freaking essay um, because then he would have had to have said no. I, I, in fact, just let them because we don't want people not coming to the left just because they're not allowed to use the N-word then without being seen as a hypocrite. Like, yeah. I don't want a leftist movement with racists in it who yeah, are going like, around saying the N-word. Like, it, it, that's not a leftist movement. Yeah, if you don't gatekeep, you just end up with conservatives in your movement. Like, exactly. You know, and then it's then not then leftism movement. anymore. Yeah, and then it's not a movement anymore. <laughs> Which is why you need gatekeeping, <laughs> which is why I gatekeep, because I don't want veganism being watered down, diluted to what it has become. In my view, it has been severely diluted. And then to the point where even people like Vosh, who have had loads of conversation on veganism, don't even know what it means. Oh my God. Right, here we go. Let's talk about veganism now. Give us your hot take, Vosh. This is a perfectly salient example. Online vegan advocacy has been <laughs> destroyed by no you got destroyed because you bit the bullet on what like holocausting trans people in space so you just like freaking like <laughs> demonstrated that the very people who you apparently care so much about like you would be willing because you can't give up your chicken tendies to like infinitely have like people you care about is people you're supposed to stand up the rights for infinitely killed like it's so sorry if anyone got destroyed it was you Xander Hall destiny got destroyed he had to bite the bullet on like killing people in like remote indigenous tribes like and like, I just... so if people don't know what we're talking about i think you're <laughs> referencing the ask yourself debate yes. and also perspective philosophy yep. maybe yeah yeah okay oh that's another thing i wanted to say oh, is that sure after he got like thoroughly wrecked by both <laughs> ask yourself and perspective philosophy he no longer debates vegans he has it written out in his discord rules he refuses to cover the topic of veganism i wonder why <laughs> oh like, yeah vegans got destroyed mate they got destroyed <laughs> yeah the people get banned for talking about veganism apparently there's a few people i know who got banned. Uh, oh and <laughs> and he is being, right now, he's saying, he's bringing up veganism. Uh -huh. Like, they're having this discussion about uh, Hassan and wealth and mm -hmm. socialism so and stuff. So it's rent-free. Rent-free keeps... rent in he... his mind. <laughs> yeah. He keeps bringing up veganism, and yet he says the reason he doesn't want to debate vegans is because it's boring. He yeah. doesn't want to talk about it. I'm yeah. like, then why are you bringing... Yeah, if it's so God. boring, like, why are you the one interjecting veganism into the sky? Yeah, it just comes up, like, it is literally so red for his head. It's so clear, like, my God, right. Oh, next bit. I, um, by, by the gatekeeping, like, piece of shit, like, moral purity. Oh, so hang on. Apparently, we call people p pieces of shit, but we haven't done it, but he can call us pieces of shit. Piece of shit, like, moral puritans who make it insufferable. Like, because to them... Going vegan for once every like one day out of every week is um it's 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 like it's not That's enough, not veganism. Anything. Yeah, like why would we <laughs> like yeah, and it's funny, he can call us he can call us pieces of shit for actually like being consistent in our values and, and, and yeah, so it's like of course we're gonna be against that because that's not veganism. Hello? <laughs> Oh my, oh my god but yeah it's fine for him to call us pieces of shit because the thing is like i take that quite personally because i am a, a, an example of that i do debates all the time 
Like, and I, I deploy the same tactics that, you know, someone like he's been debated by does, you know, I, I do that. So it's like, apparently we're pieces of shit purins for actually upholding the values that we have. <laughs> It's an insult, you know, because in order to do that, you have to kind of get in with vegan communities, you know, wow. like nobody started getting into veganism without being at least tangentially close to vegan communities, but they'll hate you for it. What? You, you don't have to be in the I don't understand what he said there. Like you, you have to be in the community like no, you, no, you don't like you can just. So I think what he's saying is that wait, play the next clip because I think. OK. Because they don't, because because they just see you as like a, you know, like oh well now that you're aware of this stuff, you know now that you're at least partially in it mm -hmm. and you're still like eating meat six days out of the week, like no, but it leads to like yeah. really bad outcomes and okay the most. <laughs> so here's here's this is what like he has a fundamental misunderstanding of what veganism is, mm -hmm. which is advocating for animal liberation and animal rights. If he thinks that you're partially in it when you eat meat six days a week like what a fucking low bar like how can you say th th first of all people justify their behavior all the time they'll be like oh like i don't eat that much meat you know like i and they might be sympathetic to vegan arguments but like if they're still consuming animal products they're still viewing them as food as commodities and that's the problem like Yes, it's an insult to animals because it reinforces their inferior status. Like yeah. that's not, exactly. you're not partially in it if you still fundamentally view animals as commodities. Like I just... And, and that's the thing, like you could say that you could, if we want to like dilute everything that much, you could say conservatives are partially in it, you know, regarding socialism because they care about, you know, freedom. They care about, you know... Exactly. So yeah. So they're partially in it. Yeah. So what do you have a problem with so them? So any any omnivore is partially vegan. Like if they eat plant foods, only exceptions would be like Jordan Peterson who eats nothing but steak. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like okay, well, so like everyone's everyone's partially vegan, so we shouldn't complain. Like how many trillion animals are killed every year, despite the fact that everyone on the planet, except for Jordan Peterson <laughs> and carnivores, everyone on the planet is already doing what Bosch. Is is advocating for yeah. which is like what <laughs> Vosh seems to do this when he's in an argument he doesn't like he'll just be like nothing means anything nothing is true anything is permitted what is the existence what is this complicated thing why are we here are we even here it's just like oh my god like just trying to muddy everything just so that like, he can like freaking wiggle his way out of a point it's painful to experience I guess <laughs> Successful advocates okay. for veganism have always been the people who are super fucking chill about it. The people who aren't <laughs> like, you're all. doing an immoral and bad action if you do X or Y, even if you believe they are. What you do instead is you try to Okay, wait, people. pause. <laughs> I was just going to say, pause. like, one of the most pe popular people that people talk about is Gary Yorofsky, who is, like, not a chill vegan. People talk about Joey Carstrong. People talk about, like... Like, Ed's chill, but under Vosh's uh, metric, he would not be. Right. No, <laughs> this is so wrong. He has no idea. You carry on. But he, okay. Uh, so he says, the wording is so hilarious to me. He says, not the, the most successful advocates are the ones who are super chill about it. Not the ones who are like, you're doing an immoral and bad action if you do X or Y. <laughs> What? The weird thing is, though, you can be chill while you say you're doing an immoral action if you're doing X and Y. You can say exactly. it in the most chill. Be like, I'm not being funny, though, man, but like, if you think about it, like, we wouldn't want dogs in that position because that would be a horrific thing to do. And there's no morally relevant difference between dogs and, like, chickens that would, you know, justify that or make that different to the individual. So to do that to the, the chicken as well is a horrible thing to do like you can say it like that that's that's a chill way to put it but you're saying the exact thing that apparently you can't do if you're chill into the good positions you know hey eating vegan isn't as bad as you think it is you know we can do better on this you know i'll here are some really great recipes actually did you know that eating vegan is cheaper than da 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 da, -da? <laughs> if you took that attitude towards hassan doing advocacy then can i just mention that not once there were the actual victims of the movement and the in whole incentive for the movement even mentioned Yes. Oh hey, Hassan, did you know that being a super duper rich millionaire means that you have lots of money you can give to causes? Oh boy. 
Hey, did you know you don't have to sit there watching YouTube videos for 12 hours? You can actually like do something. Okay, can I, can I, can I respond but, now? Yeah, but like that's a- Hey, yeah, Vosh, yeah. did you know that. that you can just stop eating dead animals? And yeah, eat yeah. food, like- <laughs> Hey Vosh, you know that you know that like if you think it's wrong to exploit and kill an animal, maybe paying for it isn't something that you should engage in. I'm just stumped as to why. Uh, I mean, it's just it comes down to me personally. For why why would we care about furthering a political cause or getting people politically activated if they have no moral obligation to do anything? Like, what is the point of making? getting more people involved if there's no moral standard for them because to if anything. they get involved they do more good things than they were doing before so you just know. hope so you just hope <laughs> that people do things no is that you what you encourage do? them to do good things you can and hope i don't know how you think social movements work but yes encouraging people to do good things is generally how all political mo uh, i mean i don't know how if you know how like political movements worked but how do you think the feminists like got, got women's rights like how do you think like loads of movements have had those changes they did direct action they disrupted exactly. people like, like he needs to read fucking martin luther king's autobiography and <laughs> the civil rights movement because the civil rights movement people fucking hated martin luther king uh -huh. They thought he was the most radical extremist. They like read letter from a Birmingham jail Bosch. Like you are being the white moderate in this. Like read context. on read on like, Malcolm X. Like he was like yeah. the more like extreme, and he had like a, a lot of success. But yeah, even Martin Luther King was really was too much apparently. Oh my god! Just the arrogance of saying like, do you know you how, how social, social movements work? Do you know? Like it's like do you? You clearly don't. <laughs> like my. God. Like the whole, what's that quote? There's a really good quote by Martin Luther King that's like, we have to bring the tension to the surface for it to be dealt with. Like we have to, uh, it's like about negative peace versus positive peace and how he's being criticized by the white moderate for not advocating in a nice way or whatever. Uh huh. It's yeah. just like, it's literally Bosch right there. <laughs> literally but Bosch. You could go the fascist route. You could scare them no. if you want. I mean, there. I guess there. You could go the fascist route and scare them. Like, I'm sorry. It's just like, please read. Please read something by someone. Just anyone. I just can't. Like at this point, I don't know. I don't know who to recommend to him. Let's do other much. options if you want. We could. We could lie about like illegals at our border, and we could convince them that forming <gasps> right wing militias are the only way to say what. Yes, obviously, encouraging people is what you do, and you can criticize them when they do bad, which I. We should encourage them to do good things. And we can criticize them when they do bad, yeah. which I do. But yes. there's a difference between criticism and condemnation, which he demonstrates that he is, he's, he doesn't understand the difference between criticism and con oh, condemnation because he's conflating the two. Right, he's conflating them. Things. And you can criticize them when they do bad, which I do. <laughs> there's a difference between criticism and condemnation. There's a difference between what? tone, attitude, affect, and there's certainly <laughs> oh, a pretty... Wait, and... Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. He just doesn't right, understand yeah, the difference. Yeah. He, yeah, oh my god. And that's that's the end. So, like, I would be willing to bet. I made a video about Vosh a long time ago. It was um, basically addressing his argument about there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, therefore mm -hmm. I'm not obligated to be <laughs> vegan. Not once in that video did I condemn him as a person, say he was a bad person, say he was stupid or a piece of shit. Like I was literally just criticizing his views. Like that's it. Uh, and no, I provided- you're, you're a piece of shit Puritan for doing <laughs> that, Catherine. So like, check yourself, okay? Like So like, yeah, there is, I will admit there is, some level of moral condemnation in my criticism because I'm condemning his behavior. Mm -hmm. Which he says, we can criticize them when they do bad, which I do. <laughs> okay, is paying, is paying for pigs to be thrown into gas chambers and for cows, babies to be stolen from them and slaughtered when they reach market weight? Like, is that, is that not bad? Is that not doing bad? Like, if I can't criticize someone for supporting such an atrocity, which Vosh has admitted elsewhere, he thinks that we will look back in the future and view this as a Holocaust. Mm -hmm. If I can't criticize people for supporting a freaking Holocaust, like, what can I criticize them for? 
<laughs> I know. That's acceptable. I know. Like Gosh. in quantity alone, there are the most victims on this planet due to animal agriculture, like in quantity alone, if we're looking at it in, in that measure. So it's got the most victims by number. If that can't be criticized, then I don't know really what can be. Like, I, I don't. And yeah, well, it, this is funny because I remember him having a debate with someone and there was a little stream clip of him saying, yeah, well, of course, you know, animals are like, you know, killed and tortured, it's horrific. So that's like negative utility, but there would be negative utility if you took it all away because people really like cheese. <laughs> And he said it unironically, and I nearly threw up. <laughs> oh, but luckily this video, like like half of the video, is just dislikes. I don't think people were very uh, happy with him. Someone said Vosh laying the groundwork for when he buys a multi million dollar house as well. <laughs> I couldn't help but think, yeah, a lot of like why he's defending it is because he probably would like one in the future. Right, Catherine, was there anything else on this uh, noodle? No, no, no that's <laughs> so it. So I'm just fed now. <laughs> Everything's fine. I can go about my day. No more Vosh. Thank you so much. <laughs>